Hi kids! Welcome to our online service that has been produced specially for you. Good morning everyone and welcome to our online service. It's so good that all of us from different cities and parts of the world can join together to worship, pray and learn more about who we are in Christ. We'd love to know who you are and where you are watching from. So on your screen you have a section called live chat. Please type in your name and tell us the name of the city that you are watching from. You can ask your parents to help you. Today, we are continuing our journey in discovering our identity in Christ. And I hope that you all remember what we learned in the previous weeks. Shall we do a quick recap to just check that? Number one, we learned that in Christ, we are a new creation. Yes. Two, in Christ, we are justified and made righteous. And then we learned in Christ, we are sanctified and made holy. In Christ, we are blessed and enriched. Very good. Wonderful. All right. I have with me a box of ice cream. I'm sure that all of us love ice cream. And now there is a box of ice cream lying in the fridge. But since it has been raining and cold for the last few weeks, you decide not to eat the ice cream for a few weeks so you don't catch a cold or a throat infection or you end up with a heavy fever. One afternoon, you see this box of ice cream on the dining table. Then you remind yourself about the decision you made not to eat the ice cream for a few weeks. Then you also start talking about how much you love ice cream, the flavor that you love the most and how delicious it is compared to the other flavors. You also talk about how much ice cream you used to eat. Your description of all the flavors makes it very tempting to eat the ice cream. And then you start looking at the ice cream. Then you take a spoon and then you think to yourself, I won't eat the entire bowl, but I just take a spoon. Then you take one spoon and then another one when no one is watching and then you quickly take the third spoon and then the fourth spoon full and then after you have eaten four spoons of ice cream you feel scared or sad or disappointed and unhappy on the inside as you never had the intention of eating the ice cream but you couldn't stop yourself you lost the battle. Now you're frustrated and you think, I'm not able to do anything. I'm always a failure. Have you ever been in a situation and done something that you really didn't want to do children? And then have you felt disappointed and maybe sad after? Remember children, that we are children of God. We have the life and the same nature of God in us. So we can do all things in Christ. And in Christ, we are victorious. This is what Philippians chapter 4 verse 13 says. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. When we say victorious, are we talking about being a winner in a competition or getting victory in a battle? Hmm. Let's pray 
and get started to find out. Let us bow down our heads and pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving us this wonderful time to come into your presence, Lord. Thank you for the cross on which you died for us to give us eternal life. Lord, help us to understand that in Christ we can do all things. You will fight all our battles if we put all our worries in your hands. And we will become more than a conqueror, Lord. Bless each and every child who are becoming the part of this online service so that they can become channel of your blessings, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's worship time and this time we are doing action songs. So why don't we all stand on our feet and move our hands and legs a bit and give our best to our Lord Jesus. All right, good morning kids. I hope you're having an amazing Sunday morning. I hope you're ready to praise and worship the Lord just as we are. The lyrics are gonna come on the screen, so please sing along with us. Here we go. Cause every single cell in my body is happy. Every single cell in my body is good. Every single cell in my body is happy. Every single cell in my body is good. I thank you, God. I feel so good. Every single cell in my body is good. I thank you, God. I feel so good. Every single cell in my body is good. One, two, three, four. Every single cell in my body is happy. Every single cell in my body is good. Every single cell in my body is happy. Every single cell in my body is good. I thank you, God. I feel so good. Every single cell in my body is good. I thank you, God. I feel so good. Every single cell in my body. Every single cell. Every single cell in my body is happy. Every single cell in my body is good. Every single cell in my body is happy.
victory of God in your name alone, God. And we give you, God, all the praise, God, all the honor, God. All the glory, God, to you. All the glory, God, to you. Satan has been defeated, God. And we thank you, God, for that. children in the old testament who were called the children of god you guessed it right the israelites when the israelites disobeyed god and did not change from their sinful ways god let the 
king of Assyria and Babylon capture them and take them as slaves to their countries. After several years, some of these people returned back to Israel, but many others stayed back in the country where they were living. One of them was Nehemiah. When one of Nehemiah's brothers came from Judah, he told Nehemiah that the people in Israel were living in great shame and trouble because the walls of the city were broken down and the gates were burned down. When Nehemiah heard this, he cried and spent some days mourning and fasting and praying to God. He prayed, God, you are a great and loving God. We, your people, have sinned against you. We have not obeyed your commandments. When I serve the king today, make him pleased with me and have him do what I ask. Later, when Nehemiah served the king, the king noticed that Nehemiah looked sad. So the king asked why. Nehemiah quickly and quietly prayed in his heart and told the king about the situation in Jerusalem and asked him if he could go back to rebuild the wall. The king could have killed Nehemiah for asking to leave, but instead he said go. The king even helped Nehemiah with what was needed to build the walls of Jerusalem. This was because God heard Nehemiah's prayer and answered it. Nehemiah went to Jerusalem to rebuild the wall, but little did he know that he was going to need to ask for a lot more help from God. See, God's people always had enemies, and these enemies wanted to stop Nehemiah and the people from building the wall. First, they discouraged them by making fun of them, saying that the wall was so weak that if a fox went on the wall, it would fall. Nehemiah prayed to God. The people continued to build the wall. When the enemies saw this, they decided to fight against Jerusalem. God revealed this plan of the enemy to Nehemiah. Nehemiah encouraged the people saying, Don't be afraid of your enemies. Remember the Lord. He is great and powerful. And on they worked, building, building and building. The closer they got to finish building the wall, the more Nehemiah's enemies realized they couldn't stop him by making fun of him or by attacking him. They tried to get Nehemiah outside the city so they could harm him. This too did not work. They tried everything. As Nehemiah kept on praying and trusting in God, God gave him the strength, the wisdom, and everything he needed to continue building the wall. Well, finally, the wall was done. The Israelites celebrated and praised God and thanked God for helping them. Nehemiah knew his identity as a leader, and more than that, he knew he was an Israelite. The people chosen by God to be his very own and carry out his plans. He knew his victory was from the Most High God, and he was not frightened or scared by the enemy's actions. Children, the enemy constantly tries to do the same with us. He's always trying to promote fear, anxiety, and worry in us. But remember, we are the children of God and we are victorious in Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57 But thanks be to God, He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now let's check if you've been paying attention and have understood what we've learned till now. Please write your answers in the live chat below. Are you ready? Here we go. And the first question is, this is a fill in the blanks question. I can do all dash through dash who dash me. Come on, quickly type in your answers in the chat section below.
excellent children. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Or we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Now we go to the second question. How did Nehemiah protect himself from the tricks of the enemies? Come on, quickly type in your answers. Good job, children. And the correct answer is Nehemiah prayed to God. Now we go to the third question. This is a fill in the blanks. But thanks be to dash. He gives us the dash through our Lord Jesus Christ. Great job. And the correct answer is But thanks be to God He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Good job children. In Christ we are victorious. Isn't it cool to know that when we are in Christ we are always on the winning side. No matter what the devil fills our hearts and minds with, we have full power and authority in Jesus to tell the devil that we are victorious over him. I have a small illustration to help us understand this better. I have here with me a glass container. Think of it as filled with all the lies the devil tells us. Like you're not good looking, or you're not smart, or you'll fail, or no one loves you. And this balloon represents your life and my life. And think of the straw as Jesus. Now I'm going to light this piece of paper and drop it into this bottle. And then I will place the balloon that represents you and me on top of the bottle and watch what happens. Can you see the balloon is sucked inside the bottle? What you just saw happen is exactly what it feels like when we get sucked into the lies of the devil. The balloon is stuck. This is the way it feels sometimes when you constantly listen and do all the bad things and the wrong things the devil tells you to do. It feels like you are stuck and it's like you don't want to get angry but you end up screaming and shouting and throwing things, using bad words, fighting or back answering your parents and disobeying them. Oh, after you do all these things, do you feel happy? No. You feel very sad and terrible. You think, I don't want to get angry, I don't want to fight, I don't want to disobey and back answer my parents. But this is what I end up doing. You may wonder, how can I stop myself or how can I do what is right? The devil will not stop or give up. He is very good at his job. That's why Jesus calls him the father of lies which means that he is the head and the top liar. God says that there's a way out. This straw represents Jesus. Now watch what happens. When we ask Jesus to come into our life, he sets us free from all our sinful habits. You can overcome the devil 
and his lies. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8 verse 37, In all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. When you always feel the devil is getting you to do all the bad and the sinful things and you feel like you are completely defeated, remind yourself that I am victorious in Christ and I can do all things through Christ. Don't give in to the devil or don't give up. Hey kids, we have been learning about our identity in Christ. So declaring who we are in Christ helps us know who we are and makes our enemy, the Satan, powerless because he cannot make us believe and live his lies. So let's all stand up and hold our Bibles high up in the air and make our declaration. We will all say it loud, bold and strong. This is God's word. This is God speaking to me. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I will become everything God has promised. I am saved, healed, delivered, redeemed. I am blessed, victorious, prosperous, triumphant. I am a minister of God, a servant of Christ, and a channel of his blessing to many people. I receive his word, I believe his word, and I live by his word. Christ is my master, and to him I am in absolute surrender. I present myself as a new wine skin to receive the new wine and fresh oil poured out on me. God releases new things and a new work of His Spirit in and through me. In Jesus' name, Amen. How encouraging was that? To shout out the declaration. To declare, I am blessed, I am victorious, I am prosperous, I am triumphant. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8 verse 37, In all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. More than conquerors. What does it mean? It means that in Jesus we are super victorious or over the top winners. How does that make you feel? Wow! But sometimes life can get crazy, can't it? You're being bullied, you have a fear of exams, no friends to play with, fear of what others might think about you. Someone in your family is sick or is in the hospital. You're not able to finish your homework. The fear of losing the game or failing the test or exam. We feel we are getting hit with big and small problems, one thing after another. But more difficult is when our hearts break, our fear rises, or our souls get pelted with condemnation and lies. You're not good enough. You can't get anything right. You are such a failure. When we get tossed around by life because of difficult situations, constant little frustrations or lies, we feel really shaken up, don't we? Instead of giving into our fears, believing and living the lies of the enemy, we just need to stand confident in our authority in Christ and say, enough! To the enemy who is throwing his fiery darts at us. We need to put our foot on the neck of the enemy. You know children, in the olden days when a king 
lost a battle that he was forced to lay on the ground with his head forward so that the king who won the battle could put his foot in the center of his neck. This showed everyone that the enemy had been defeated and was made powerless. Satan, our enemy, often feels stronger than we are. It can feel like he's constantly attacking and defeating us. But the truth is that on the cross, Jesus won the victory over Satan. And Jesus shares his victory with us. So the enemy is the one who is defeated, overthrown and powerless. He's under your feet. We, the children of God, are victorious. And we have authority over our enemy. Fight back and watch how God will help you win. How can we fight back and be victorious in Christ? Hmm. Two ways. One is by faith. The Bible says, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith. You'll find that in 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. Faith believes in God as our Savior and Lord. Faith rests on the fact that God is in control and we are not. It trusts God in everything. We get faith from the Holy Spirit and through reading the Bible. We can ask God for more faith. Faith in God is our victory over any situation. It does not take the situation away, but it gives us the victory in our hearts. You see, the battle is always won and lost in our heart. The next way is to obey. The Bible says, but God be thanked that though you were slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. And you'll find that in Romans chapter 6, verse 17. When you obey from the heart, you put God in charge of your life. Obedience is giving someone else the authority they deserve. When we obey all that the Bible tells us, we allow God to be in charge of our life. So children, don't get discouraged. You don't fight for a position of victory. You fight from a position of victory. The enemy may squirm and squawk, but he's still under your feet. We will not fear, even if the darts start to fly. We will not be discouraged, even if the lies start to bombard us again. He who is in you is greater than he that is in the world. Because he that is in the world is under your feet. Thanks be to God, who always leads us in victory because of Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. Today we saw how Nehemiah was sent to Jerusalem to build the broken down walls of the city. The same way God can fix anything that's broken in our lives. In the right time, God sent a very special rescuer, not just to save a broken wall, but to save the world. He made it possible, not just for the Israelites, but for everyone in the whole world who confess their sins and follow him and thank him for his rescue. So just like how the wall was made new back then, our lives, our old lives can be made new right now by following Jesus and making that decision. We all have something broken in our lives and we all need this rescuer and savior. So if you've still not made that decision and have made it today, 
It's as simple as just repeating the prayer after me. Will you do that children? Close your eyes and just repeat after me. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you Lord for rescuing us from all that is broken in our lives. Thank you Jesus for dying on that cross for everyone. Thank you for including me in your big plan. Lord Jesus, I ask today for you to come into my life to change every broken thing, renew my mind, to help me follow you for the rest of my life. This I ask in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Also children, if you are praying for any miracle or any healing in your bodies, I encourage you to pray with me. Just these two lines, trusting God on that miracle, on that healing. For he is alive even today and listening to every word of your prayer. Close your eyes with me children. Loving Heavenly Father, I pray for every child who is Lord believing in you and has put their trust in you for this particular healing or for this particular miracle that they are praying for with me, O oh Lord. Lord, if you see faith as small as a mustard seed, you will move mountains, Lord. Father, Lord, you strengthen their faith by answering their prayers. Whatever they're praying for, whether it is healing or a miracle, Lord, grant them what they require. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If God is for me, who could ever be against me? And if God is for me, I don't need to fear the enemy. There is victory in Jesus, there is victory in Him. He gave me grace, I gave Him my sin. He died on the cross and then He rose again. There is victory in Jesus, there is victory in Him. The I-C-T-O-R-Y, this will be our battle cry. The tomb is empty, He's alive. The I-C-T-O-R-Y, the I-C-T-O-R-Y. The enemy better run and hide. The King of Kings is on our side. The I-C-T-O-R-Y, the I-C-T-O-R-Y. The accuser comes at me as quick as he can But no weapon formed against me will stand I am redeemed by the blood of the Lamb Protected forever by the great I Am There is victory in Jesus, there is victory in Him He gave me grace, I gave Him my sin He died on the cross and then He rose again There is victory in Jesus, there is victory in Him The I-C-T-O-R-Y, this will be our battle cry The tomb is empty, He's alive The I-C-T-O-R-Y, the I-C-T-O-R-Y The enemy better run and hide The King of Kings is on our side The I-C-T-O-R-Y
We hope you enjoyed today's online service and we would love to hear from you. Feel free to write us an email at kidsonline at apcwo.org or just type in your comments in the live chat. Also, do not forget to visit us online at apcwo.org slash kidsonline. We have n number of activities and challenges for you to take part in. Also, if you do a good job and send it to us, we may include it in the upcoming online services. So do not forget to visit us online at apcwo.org slash kids online. Before we close, is anyone's birthday coming up this week? If so, why don't you type your name, your age and your birth date in the live chat. And we would love to pray for you and wish you as a family. Have you always had questions about the Bible, about Jesus and how to live for Jesus? Why don't you write an email to us with your questions at kidsonline at apcwo.org and we would try our best to answer your questions in the upcoming online services. We look forward to hearing from you. Shall we close in prayer, children? Close your eyes. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for today's learning, Lord. We thank you for the time we spent at your feet. For we know that the time we spend at your feet is never wasted time. Thank you for everything that we received in online service. And we think of the underprivileged who do not have these options during these tough times. Lord, bless them and provide for them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bye children. I'll see you next Sunday. Bye bye children. See you next week. Bye children. See you next Sunday.